بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل ویئر یسٹرڈے وی اسٹارٹ ڈسکسنگ ناٹ یسٹرڈے ان دا پریویس ویڈیو آئی وڈ سی فار می ہیٹ واز جسٹ ففٹین منٹس اگو وی اسٹارٹ ڈسکسنگ واٹ وی اسٹارٹ ڈسکسنگ دی ریکٹی فائر سرکٹس ان وچ وی اسٹارٹ دی ہاف ویو ریکٹی فائر سو وی انڈرسٹوڈ دا بیسک فینومینا واٹ ڈی ڈو کنورٹس اے سی وولٹیج ٹو ڈی سی وولٹیج وی سو دیٹ واز ناٹ اے پیور ڈی سی ایٹ واز اے پلسیٹنگ ڈی سی ان وچ ایٹ ریموو one cycle and that was the negative cycle of course if the uh, diode is connected in a reverse fashion so it will uh, you know remove the positive cycle and the negative cycle would be the only voltage still that is a dc voltage right uh, today we have some terms so in the previous video we derived the expression for v average and on the basis of that i wrote the expression for v i average and this i average could also be written as uh, i m by pi because v m upon r would be your i m right so you could write this as an i m upon pi the same way as we have upon by similarly today let's say the third term that we have is the this or the second term that we have is the rms voltage the rms voltage or the rms current let's say the rms load current output current okay so rms load current and Uh, you know what rms means root mean squared value so what is that so i'm very weak in mathematics L let me uh, tell you from the very beginning okay so you can do it by yourself or i will just try to copy it from here so the rms means what that it's under the root and it's square of the mean value and this would be like this that one upon two pi a zero to two pi i output squared with respect to omega t fine and now you can do the rest yourself so you have a one upon two pi let me just split the integral from zero to pi it is i m sine of omega t the same as the voltage and then plus uh, a pi to two pi it is uh, it is it is zero right so uh, and this whole has a power of 1 by 2 so let me just draw a little bigger bracket and give it the power of a 1 by 2 is that fine it is so now uh, this uh, integration would come out to be 0 this integration which one the zero wait i'm just checking something else i'm just checking something else and just let it be so this would be zero the integration of zero and then i am what come outside of the integration so you have an i am upon 2 pi and then you have the integration of but wait a minute you have you have got a square so you have an i am squared sin squared omega t and now it is uh, going to be something tough so you have an i am squared upon 2 pi would come outside and then the integration would be from 0 to 2 pi of sin squared omega t with respect to omega t and the whole thing under a square root now what can we do is we can replace it by a formula we have cos square theta is what we have a formula that cos square theta is 1 minus 2 sin square theta so this would imply that sin square theta is uh, uh, is is 1 minus cos square theta upon 2 1 minus cos or 2 theta upon 2 this is cos of 2 theta cos of 2 theta cos of 2 theta so this formula implies what this would now be equal to i am squared upon 2 pi and in in this you would have let's say this 2 i take outside this 2 i take outside and then you have a 0 to pi this one this is not 0 to 2 pi 
So I have told you that I am very weak in this and, and, and you can guess from the amount of time that I am taking. So 0 to pi and then you have 1 minus cos of 2 mega 2. So you have uh, 1 minus cos of 2 omega t and this is all with respect to omega t. So do it yourself. For, so this is split it with one for one it would be omega t and for this it would be sine of 2 mega t divided by 2 right. So you split it first the first step i m square and of course the whole power 1 over 2. I am squared upon a 4 pi and then for 1 the integration would be omega t for this it would be sine of 2 omega t upon 2 yes and the limits are 0 to pi and this thing is whole under the root So you, you solve the value, you put a pi over here, pi minus sine of pi. So this is, uh, this, gives, this gives you an overall pi. So you have an i m squared divided by 4 pi. And then that is multiplied with a pi. So you put a pi in here, pi minus sine of multiple of pi would give you a zero right and then you put a zero so zero minus zero so you have got a pi right so this pi and this pi would cancel out and then when you have a, under the root so this comes out to be i m upon two i m upon two right this comes out to be i m upon two isn't it like this it is it is so let me write it over there let me write it over there. Uh, I can remove this, for instance, that my I M, uh, my I R M S is I M upon 2. Similarly, my V R M S, this would be V M upon 2. Now, don't confuse it with the original input website. You know from the your basics that, that it's him by under the root 2. Right? This I also confused while while proving this, but then when I checked, so, so when I remembered that this is for a rectified output, we, are, we don't have one cycle. Okay? Yes. So this is for the RMS voltage and the current. The next is the, the efficiency of the transformer. So the efficiency of the, of the what? Let me remove this as well. Efficiency of the rectifier. So basically this is also known as the rectification efficiency. Now what do we have to do in this case? The basic requirement is to convert an AC signal into a DC signal, right? Which means our requirement is DC, right? And what is the input? So basically you could say the output is a DC, the input is an AC, right? So what can we do here? The purpose is AC to DC. But how much fraction of the total power at the output is DC power? This is from the efficiency, right? So you saw that still the output was what? The output was periodic, right? The output was periodic. All that was not a pure DC, it was a pulsating DC, but it was periodic. And a periodic function can have a Fourier series. And I believe at this level you know a very basic thing about the Fourier series. Which means if I write it, so V naught, this is equal to A naught, plus then you have a summation, uh, let's say B is running from N, N is running from 1 to infinity, you have an A N cos, N omega T, and then you have a plus B N sine uh, N omega T. So this is what, this is the Fourier series in which these terms, this summation term A and B and these are the AC terms and this A naught is the DC term in this, fine. So the average value comes from the DC term, right? The average value comes from the DC term, you know this very well, that DC is the average value. So what do we have basically, eta is the output divided by input you would say output divided by the input power multiplied by 100% of course so in this case what do I write is I write you that the uh, 
that this is your DC power because DC power is your output which is your requirement you are having it at the output and the input is the AC power which is the total power it has an AC component it has a DC component so this is what I would write so what do we do in this case is for the DC power now have a look for the DC power comes from the average value so in terms of voltage if I am writing it so we have a we have a V average squared upon the load resistance and if I take about the total power that's a sinusoidal input so we talk about the RMS value in that case so we have an VRMS squared upon RL so RL and RL cancels out V average is uh, is VM by pi so we have a VM squared divided by pi squared and then you have a multiplied by 1 over so this we can say by 4 by VM squared because VM by 2 VRMS right so VM squared VM squared cancels out and then you have a 4 upon pi squared and this gives you the value of 40.56 so the value of the efficiency of the half wave rectifier is 40.56 which is a very very low value which is a very low value eta is 40.56 which means that the 40.56 percent of the total power is con being converted into a DC power after total power delivered to the resistor 40.56 is only contributed by the DC component which is which is very low of course which is very low so this is the this is done the next is the form factor so form factor is what we have a formula for this this is only the vrms squared we are ms divided by the average value so the next is if you talk about the form factor i will write it directly over here form factor this is just equal to uh, 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 let's say a final value is pi by 2 in this case let me write over here that the form factor is what it's uh, let me write it full why am I in a hurry I don't know maybe because I've taken some time without doing anything so form factor so this is equal to the RMS output divided by average output V not RMS divided by V not average V not RMS Vm by 2 multiplied by pi by Vm. This comes out to be pi by 2. Is that fine? It is. So this is about the form factor. It gives you information about the waveform. Yes. And this is 1.51. Pi by 2 is 1.51. So now as this is greater than 1, so this suggests that the RMS term is greater than the average term. Right? You could say the AC term, let it go. Let it go. This is about the, the, the form factor. One other factor is the ripple factor. One other factor is the uh, ripple factor. And where have I written it? So it's over here this is the ripple factor indicates what is the ripple in the output voltage so this is form factor squared minus one ripple factor this indicates what this indicates the amount of ripple in the uh, and ripple is what it's the the pulsating dc basically you don't have a pure dc so what person is a is a is an is a pulsating dc over there so that would be told by this ripple factor this is a form factor squared minus 1 and you have form factor value uh, so you can just put it over here and you get a 1.21 1.21 which is equal to 121 percent which is a very poor value which is a very poor value ripple factor you have 121 percent which means this much is the amount of ripple so we need a pure dc this has to be as low as possible Basically, this is the harmonic RMS voltage divided by the DC voltage. 
This is basically what? This basically is the harmonic RMS voltage. This is basically the harmonic voltage to the DC voltage ratio. So if this is greater than 1, this means that the harmonic voltage is greater, which is undesirable. It's not required. What we require at the output is the DC voltage, right? So uh, uh, this has to be less than 1. So that would be your DC voltage would be greater. And that is what we require in case of the rectifier circuits. We have another factor that is the transformer utilization factor. We have a factor of transformer uh, utilization factor. Let me write over here transformer utilization factor. Now what is this? What is this? So, uh, this factor tells you that how much of the total capacity of the transformer you are using. Let's say I need, I have a 10 kVA load and I install a 50 kVA transformer to that. So, which this means that I am just simply wasting the 40 kVA capacity of that transformer, right? So, this is what this transformer utilization factor tells us. Our required is DC power, right? How efficiently are we using the transformer? So, the transformer utilization factor is given by in this case, the transformer utilization factor will be given by the DC power divided by the KVA rating of the transformer. This is some sort of an efficiency, right? Again, because the DC power is the output, KVA rating is our input. So for DC power, we use the average values that you know very well. Uh, this is the V average into I average. And, and then KVA rating. So for that we use the RMS value. So you have V input RMS and then you have I input RMS. Now where is this used? So I did not, I did not tell you. So I have to tell you that as well first. <laughs> right? So basically this is used at the input side. Basically the input voltage is quite large. So the input is a applied across a transformer. So this is basically your, your sinusoidal input is a cr applied across a transformer to step down the input voltage and then further on we have the rectifier circuit which is like this. So it has got two purposes. It has, uh, the first is it has stepped down the voltage and the second is that it has provided isolation, electrical isolation between the input and the output circuit. So write it down for yourself. Now you can see that the, what do you have? What, let me check what have I written over here. Uh, okay. So you could see that uh, the source current, uh, the, 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 the secondary current is equal to the output current, right? So I can replace the, we don't have anything to do with the input, input voltage, input current, but the, the secondary current is equal to the, this is the secondary current, right? And this is equal to my output current. I secondary is equal to I output. Isn't it like this? It is. So I can just, why? Because I don't have the value of this I input RMS. So I would just do, do a little game with it, right? So we have a V average upon I average and let me write the values. So V average is Vm by pi. And then you have into I average is I m by pi. And then it's whole divided by V input RMS. So the input RMS is V m by under the root 2. And I output RMS is 
i m by 2 i m by 2 this is under the root 2 you have to just keep in your mind so what will happen v m will cancel with v m i m will cancel with i m you would have a pi squared upon 2, two, two under the root 2 upon pi squared 2 under the root 2 upon pi squared and you you calculate this this comes out to be 0 0.286 if I write it in terms of if I write it in terms of percentage so the transformer utilization factor comes out to be 28.6 percent which is again a poor value this means that the, the given trans for the given transformer I am using 28.6 percent of its total capability cap, cap, capability or the total capacity so I combine the words capability and capacity so this is again a poor value anyways these were some associated terms and in the next video if we have them so we'll just do it in the same video as that now I told you about the book example so I'll try uh, I'll just make it after this and I'll combine it with the previous video so th this get not get very long and th that one is also not so short so anyways I think I got this video a little boring I'm sorry I'm just I don't like these mathematical things and that's why it's got boring so uh, anyway see you in the next video very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye